we're here today with Camille Ray, yes. and you've got a new single out. So let's talk about or coming out. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. I want you. Right? But I want you. But I want you. Uh -huh. But it's got yes. a but in front of it. All right. And have a little sass in there. That's right. So talk about um, how the song came to you and uh, a little bit about the music and, you know, just kind of. All do right. Your thing. So the single is actually on iTunes. It's been out for about two and a half weeks, mm -hmm. and it just was pushed to radio. Uh, just about the same length of time. I think the 16th is when it went to iTunes. Um, and it's it's a song by three great writers in Nashville, Miss Jada Dreyer, Jay Nels, and Frank Willem. And they've written some wonderful songs for a lot of great artists. Absolutely. And so um, I was actually talking to Aristo um, probably, I don't know, three, four months ago. And I've always loved Jada, and so I asked for a Jada song and he sent me a folder of songs and this one just popped out at me and so um, it's, it's just about wanting someone that you really shouldn't want and it's a really cute take on the situation because it is a very complicated and frustrating thing but it's really cute and it's really fun and the song is going over so well and it's really really fun to sing and I've got a lot of good feedback live when I sing it by myself and with my band. I actually just did it with my band live this past weekend. That's fun. And so, um, but it's, it's really great and um, it's an honor to be able to sing the song and to get it out there too to everyone. So. Now, did you work with them at all, the songwriters, um, or did you just pick it up after they've written it and do your thing with it? Because there's always uh -huh. their version, your version. Exactly. So have you in a... I actually, um, I, I got the song after it was completely written. Mm -hmm. And so they sent me a version that I like very much and I just kind of... I tweaked it a little bit and right. took it up a couple, couple of keys and uh, just made it my own. Okay. Now I know that you released your album in 2015. Mm -hmm. Um, talk about what some of the comments have been made by your fans and mm -hmm. reactions through meet and greets and on social media and stuff. How are they, you know, accepting it? What are they asking you? What, you know, yeah. can I give you some feedback uh, on what you're hearing Well, from my album, um, it's all self-written. So I, all the songs on my album um, are, are just a collection of songs that I've written over the past, well, I would say 10 years and most of them over the past three. So it really... It really focuses on a personal journey for me and the changes that I've made from um, from being a teacher and and doing theater to really focusing in on my yeah. artist career and just those emotions that go along with it. Um, but some feedback that I've gotten from fans or from friends, I like to say, is um, that they can listen to the whole album all the way through and that they don't want to skip any songs. And so that's really a compliment because it's, it's hard to find albums that you want to listen to from start to finish. Yeah. Um, and then just this, that the songs connect with people that they're really relatable and um, that they touch on subjects that people really need to deal with and help to heal themselves. And so that's really my biggest goal as an artist. So I'm happy with uh, the feedback that I've gotten from the album. And it's self-produced by myself and my manager, Amber Smith. And so it's really cool to see the songs um, having that good feedback production-wise because we, you know, we were, we were really nervous about, about what people would say. Absolutely. And uh, so it's been all positive. Um, and it's been a great, a great ride over the past year promoting it and seeing how people like it. And, yeah. And you started your career very young. Yeah. You were 12. And you've been writing a lot of this time. Mm -hmm. I mean... So as a young artist just starting out, you started out before the social media craze. And, mm -hmm. you know, how have you grown over the last few years with everything? I mean, and you're still young, so it's not like, you know, that you've had a long span, mm -hmm. but talk about that a little bit, how it's helped your career and, you know, some of those aspects and how they fit together. Yeah, well, that, that, is, a, that is a big point. I always say that if I came to Nashville in the 90s, how different it would be from now. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've been singing since I was three, been doing talent shows and started writing at 12. And social media and um, YouTube and all of the facets that you can go through in that way, it's insane. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm really old school. Like I know that I'm in the younger generation, but I'm kind of like I don't know, a really old person when it comes to social media, so I have to have a lot of help and a lot of advice and a lot of reminders. Um, I'm sure but, there's a lot of fans out there that would be raising their hands exactly, right now saying, I'll do it, I'll Exactly. Do it. Yeah. Um, but it, it really, it just helps get your music out there on, in a way that you, you can't think possible. And just yeah. looking at um, the sales of the single and album sales and 
it's all over the world, so it's not just centralized to where you are. It's it's able to branch out to all these places you would never imagine. And so it's 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 like all these crazy things happening that you don't even know it until you see the the results. And yeah. so, yeah. so social media definitely helps. And I'm getting on board to knowing how to do all of that and getting a lot of help with that too. So we'll talk a little bit about. I mean, because of the age group that you are in you think out of the box compared to some of the older generation people. Mm -hmm. So have you come up with any fun new ways of reaching fans, whether it be through social media or doing things for them to get them to participate and to garner new fans? Um, well, of course, Facebook Live has right. been a big help. And mm -hmm. it's you can go you can go on and do anything and people people will watch the videos that you would think they wouldn't watch. Right. Like if you putting your makeup on or right. driving down the road. They want to know and, the yeah, they really want to know the real yes. person. Yes. Um, but in the past I've done like uh, a song or I would write a song for likes. Like if I get this many likes in this amount of time, I'll write a song and I'll draw a name out of all my new likes and I will put your name in the song. And I did that once, and it was it was really fun. That is um, fun. But just That's different good. little little you know activities like that, uh, just to just to gain interest and to get new people on mm -hmm. board, yeah. and for people to really start talking about it. Because that that's the tough thing, yeah. is to branch out past the people that have already that have known you your whole life and already like all your social media sites and stuff. So. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And you've had an opportunity to open with some pretty big names. Yeah. So, can I talk about some of the people that you've opened for and, you know, maybe how that's helped you get a, a step up or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe something that you learned from that? Yeah. Well, let's see. Who, who have I? Let's see. I opened for David Cook. Mm -hmm. He was uh, kind of more of a, of a rock artist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they're like, could you rock it up just a little bit? And so that was really fun. Yeah. And uh, the cool thing about opening for bigger acts is that. They have their fans there. They're they're hardcore fans, mm -hmm. and you get to you get to sing to this group that may ne otherwise would have not known your name or mm -hmm. would have not known where to look on social media. Um, and then Maddie and Tay, that was really fun. It was an outdoor kind of festival, right? And so I didn't actually get to meet them because it was it was raining and we were trying to get everything. everything um, but that was that was a really fun experience and. Um, it was a it was an all girls night. Post Monroe sang after me, so it's got girl power. That is great girl yeah. power there. Uh -huh. all of but it it shows um, you have to be really versatile mm -hmm. and depending and it whether it be well we really like your sound we know you're a country artist but we want you to open for this rock band. Can you you know add a few more drum rhythms in there to make it just so, just to appeal to their audience to open up yeah. or yeah. you know we want you as a solo act so no band this time and it's just kind of juggling what they what kind of uh, atmosphere they want to have and, and how they want me to open up their show mm -hmm. and uh, for Maddie and Tay I was solo and so that was a really cool intimate just with I, I took my, my drummer and he played home but it's it was like this intimate open open up to um, you know what they've had going on, and I thought that was that was pretty cool. It was yeah. an honor to yeah. that they trusted that I could just go on stage with my guitar and and uh, and open the show, and then it, and then it have a good flow to it. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you do the meet and greets after, when you have opened for another act, which primarily you kind of know, they're mostly there to mm -hmm. see that person. Yeah. That you're there to warm them up and to do everything. What's been some of the funnest? things that maybe fans have come up to you afterwards after seeing you and you're know, like, oh my god, I didn't know you could sing and I really like you. you know, what Has anything really surprised you or really touched you in those meet and greets afterwards? Well, I just love meeting people and I stand out there as long as there are people. Mm -hmm. um, I love all the little ones and they're super cute and I always, you know, having those, having those moments of where a child is looking up to you is, is the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, but it's it's I've noticed more and more lately as I do open for bigger acts that either people have been following me for a while and I didn't I didn't realize or they saw that I was on the roster and they bought my album before they came mm -hmm. and so you have people coming in and telling telling you how much they love your songs and you're like wow you actually you know you listen before yeah. you came yeah. and, and so it's 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 getting 
it's getting more and more interesting as, as my name gets out there more, but it's just, it's just meeting people and showing them that you, you're a real person. Like, I'm just like you. I just yeah. sing songs. Yeah. You know, that's, that's only, my career is a little different than yeah. yours, but I'm, I'm just the same. I'm just as down to earth. And to get to show them that side of me, like genuinely show them that side of me is, yeah. it, is really cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that one of your redheaded idols is Reba. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that that would be one person that you would love to open for oh, or to gosh. sing with or do a duet with. I would have to maybe like, I'll probably pass out before, but yeah. No, I, my first, uh, my first radio single, uh, it's called Shadows Dance Tonight. And at first, when I first wrote it, which was about a couple years ago, I thought about pitching it. And I was like, but who would sing it? Because it's, it's a really unique kind of song, a unique sound, and there's not really many female artists out there that I could imagine singing it but Reba. And I was like, Reba can sing it. Reba can sing it all day long. Yeah, no, yeah. she's she's great. And I would love to open and to sing with her. Well, I would have to, I'd have to probably take medication in order not to cry and scream and, and pass out. I but you would do just fine. But yeah, so she's, I, I, she's queen for sure. She's, she's amazing. Well, as, as a, and I don't, I can't really call you a new artist because you've been doing this for so long, but kind of new to the Nashville fan base mm -hmm. and so forth. Everybody has that carrot that is kind of dangling over their head or that one goal that they really want. You know, some people it's to get an award. Some people it's to play at a certain venue. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you're looking at and going, I want to do this or I want to get that? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to sing on the Opry stage. All country artists want to do that. Absolutely. And yes. uh, that is a, that's a big goal of mine. I want to, you know, I want to win, win a Grammy or Grammys, however many they want to give me like fine. Like a girl with big, big Yeah, Grammys. I mean, well, I mean, if, I, if I'm going to go for this, then I want it to be to the top. And so, um, and then my biggest goal, my biggest bucket list goal, I was actually asked this question not too long ago, um, is to do a nationwide children's hospital tour and to stop in each city or as many hospitals as I can. Yeah. Most of the proceeds of the concerts going to the hospitals and then visiting with each hospital and the kids as I go along. Just. I just and I, I have a big heart for St. Jude's and mm -hmm. um, and I do musicians on call for uh, and I do a lot at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital and so that's a big bucket list goal of mine. Have you ever artist. thought about having a kids choir or, or something like that back you up or come on stage with you? You know what? I like was a high school teacher, taught high school choir for three years when I first graduated college, and yes, I've thought about that many times and just you know an opportunity to get that organized and maybe bring yeah. bring some former students on and that would be really cool. That would so be very hopefully fun that can get in the works one day. Yeah, that would be very fun. Mm -hmm. One question I kind of started incorporating in is if you were on a street corner and you're trying to sell your song or your CD, what would you tell people? You're, you're trying to, you know, to sell it right then and out the open. What's your pitch? <sighs> My pitch? Um, well, it's just a lot of attitude. But it's real. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's real situations. Um, I like to say that my songs are talking about things that you just don't talk about out loud. And I think we all need to hear that. But my pitch um, would be like, I'm like the new age 90s country. And that really like traditional, awesome power ballad female artist of today. And uh, it has a lot of influences from all of the uh, traditional and uh, music of uh, anything 90s and before yeah and so I think I think in country music a lot of people are wanting to, to hear that again and I think to, you're right to bring that yeah. part of country back it's circling and, back around exactly are, they're mm -hmm. hungry for that sound again so yeah it doesn't break my heart either I'm happy that Yay. it's coming back because I like that same mm -hmm. same genre that same year whatever yeah. you want to call it and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it makes all the difference in the world Anything else that you want to add that you want to make sure that everybody knows about or uh, that you want to just, you know, maybe something that well, nobody ever asked you that you say, golly, I wish they'd asked me this? You know, you've covered quite a bit, but I do have some things coming up um, in Nashville, and that's kind of rare because I'm on the road a lot, but I have a showcase on the 26th, October 26th, at the country. It starts at 5.30 p.m., and it will be um, myself and at least one other amazing artist. We're getting all that in the works and doing original music and get to hear the new single and then uh you should check out my music on itunes Absolutely. and, uh, yes. and my, my song is on country radio right now but i want you so you can 
you know, call and request and aggravate all the stations. That's right. That's right. Point, so. That's right. Well, it's always fun to see you, always fun to talk to you, and I know that everybody's excited now to go out and listen and see what they've got and what Hope you've so. got. So yeah. thanks for coming today. Well, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. All right.